नमस्कार अनि वेलकम गर्न चाहन्छु सबै सन्दर्भको यो यस्तो टाइमलाइन जहाँ चाहिँ म फ्रेश काले आएर तपाईलाई साथ दिइरहेको छु समय सन्दर्भमा हामी कुरा गर्छौ समय सापेक्ष भएर के कस्तो छ एन्ड मच मोर तर सन्डेको टाइमला हामीले अलिकति डेभलपमेन्ट पर्सपेक्टिभमा पनि हेरिरहेका छौ र यही डेभलपमेन्ट पर्सपेक्टिभमा हेर्दाखेरि आज हामीसँग एकजना गेस्ट आइसक्नु भएको छ इट्स टाइम आई वेलकम हिम डान चर्च एटको बारे तपाईले सुनी नै रहनु भएको छ होला तर त्यही डान चर्च एटको हामीसँग अर्थक्विक रिस्पोन्स टिम लिड हुनुहुन्छ एन्ड्रू फर्लम्यान विथ अस टुडे एन्ड वी बी टकिङ टुडे रिलेटेड टु डान चर्च एट अझै त्योसँग पनि डेभलपमेन्ट पर्सपेक्टिभमा के जस्तो कुराहरू भइरहेको छ आज तपाईले समय सन्दर्भ हिमालय टेलिभिजनमा थाहा पाउन सक्नुहुन्छ नाउ इट्स टाइम आई वेलकम हिम हेलो एन्ड्रू वेलकम टु आवर शो नमस्ते सो हाउ डू यू फिल टुडे like after the earthquake response from june till here well the, the earthquake response in the beginning was obviously quite hectic because i arrived to de- to lead the emergency response in early june mm-hmm. uh but we've done an awful lot of work since then and we're making we're making good progress at the moment so we're we're pleased with the work that we've done but obviously there's a huge amount still to do and there's still a large number of people in need all across nepal Okay. Well, uh just talking about your own experience working with Dan Church Aid and working in Nepal. Mm-hmm. How has it been different because you've been working in different countries before and coming to Nepal and working for the earthquake response? How does it feel? Well, first of all, it's nice to be back in Nepal because uh this is actually not my first time in Nepal. I've been here three or four times before. Okay. Uh so it's good to be back. I mean, I would have preferred to have been back under happier circumstances. But it's it's been good and as I said the the work that we've done has been quite substantial. Uh we've uh reached about nine, between 90 and 100,000 beneficiaries through a mixture of uh shelter provision, uh water water hygiene and sanitation provision mm-hmm. and now we're moving into early recovery livelihoods. Mm-hmm. So it's been an, for us it's been an extremely good program and we'd like to think that we've it's an extremely high quality program as well okay and also danchet works in terms of livelihood livelihood yes yes, yes, yes and yes. indeed uh, when it comes to like sanitation health as you have already mm-hmm, mentioned mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so um how effective do you think the work has been well our, our work i think has been extremely effective um we're a medium sized ngo so uh for the wash work we will have reached about 4 to 5000 households so it's about 20 to 25000 people mm-hmm. across the four districts in right. which we work uh we've tried wherever possible to do the highest quality interventions that we can um in some ways we could have reached higher numbers but we wanted to deliver a quality a quality product yeah. a good a good quality product that's going to last in 4 5 6 more years time mm-hmm. um and we feel that to a large extent we've done that right. uh to an extent some of the work was a little bit delayed because of the fuel crisis mm-hmm. and the blockade Blocking, yeah. along with other people um i suppose that put us back two or three months in terms of delivery mm-hmm. but we're more or less on track now and uh most of the work is nearing completion especially on the um water hygiene and sanitation side all right after like so much months after earth mm-hmm. becoming to the position till now mm-hmm. how do you evaluate it like um how do you think has the changes been if you had to rate it like do you think from your perspective has it been okay or do you think it has been effective i mean i think that what we've done has been effective mm-hmm. but obviously it's not comprehensive and yes. it doesn't meet all of the needs uh just in because of the level of need and the resources that we have mm-hmm. it's not quite enough to meet everybody but in the areas where we've responded we've been we've done enough to allow people to survive through through the monsoon for example okay. so we provided cash grants for shelter mm-hmm. so that people were allow were able to rebuild their rebuild their homes or actually to build temporary shelters so they had a roof over their heads during the monsoon mm-hmm. but of course that's not the same as being able to provide money for permanent shelter okay. which is a uh, obviously a much longer term uh, goal um which uh the international community is looking towards now mm-hmm. well um another one question which was hitting my mind like in terms mm-hmm. uh, you started when did you start after earthquake how many day did you start your work well dca was there within uh the first few days after the earthquake okay. so within the first 72 hours uh my colleagues were out in the field distributing mm-hmm. uh blankets tarpaulins yeah. 
uh, emergency food to those who were uh, sleeping on the streets mm -hmm. in the immediate aftermath. So we, we were really there from almost day one, okay. um, providing assistance. Uh, the infrastructure work obviously took a little bit longer because there's more planning involved. But for our cash assistance program for um, emergency shelter, for the to provide temporary shelter, and we were able to get that out. We started distribution for that in in June, and we were able to get most of that out by early August, mm -hmm. um, which was ahead of a lot of other other international actors. So we were able to act quite fast okay. in order to bring provision to people who needed it mm -hmm. um, whilst the monsoon was still going on. So people still had uh, shelter over their heads during the monsoon period. And also talking about what next now uh, towards this like whole year of earthquake response. Now what next are your plans through Dan Church? What are their plans in the coming days re um, regarding it? So we are launching quite a large livelihoods program okay. uh, targeting um, vulnerable people, so dialect groups, Chapang, and other poor and marginalized groups who had suffered significant earthquake losses. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's also a cash program. So we're giving cash through community groups okay. uh, to allow people to rebuild their, their livelihoods mm -hmm. after the um, earthquake. But I think the, the biggest need, and one where just the, with the resources that we have, mm -hmm. we're only ever going to be able to scratch the surface, mm -hmm. is on shelter. People are still out, in the, out there and they're still living in temporary shelters. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that's the main focus for the international community now, I think, is, I... is looking at the permanent shelter solution. Okay. One more thing, like in terms of Dan Church, the uh, provision of providing cash, right? Yes, exactly. So, uh, how, like, how do you, uh, like, do you think it in a very positive way of providing cash could be uh, very positive in terms because there are very, very, like, various other organizations yeah. who believe yeah. giving cash would not be a right choice? Um, for us, we found that cash has worked. Okay. So we have evidence from our post-distribution monitoring that nearly all of the beneficiaries who we gave cash to mm -hmm. actually used it for some form of rebuilding. Okay. So they either used it for, um, for the purchasing of materials mm -hmm. or paying laborers mm -hmm. to rebuild or to replace household assets that had been lost okay. to get them through that initial crisis period. Right. So we have found almost no misuse of funding okay. for that. And the example that I get is, if your house burns down in a fire, yeah. and somebody comes and gives you an insurance payout or gives you money to rebuild, yes. you're going to need to spend that money yeah. to rebuild your house. Yes. And that's largely the same for the people in the field. They mm -hmm. have a real, real need, and the cash enabled them to meet that need. Mm -hmm. So we found that it was flexible. It also, we also found that it was fast. And we also found that it was enabled us to give assistance to people who needed it when they needed it. That means you believe that cash could be like, uh, they could use it in their very like, what the kind of things they needed. It, it is going to according to their needs, so you don't find any negative in terms of providing cash. No, we haven't provided, we haven't seen too many negatives in okay. terms of provision of cash, um, especially because it, we feel that it also gives more flexibility in what they can spend the money on. Mm -hmm. So for us, if we had just given CGI sheets or just yeah. building materials, then they would have only have had it for building materials. Yes. Whereas if we give cash, as I said before, we can allow that they can rebuild they can rebuild with wider materials okay. they could buy timber yes, they right. could buy iron rods mm -hmm. they can pay for laborers if they are in debt or they've taken on a large amount of debt to buy materials before we arrived then they can repay that debt before it becomes too burdensome mm -hmm. so for us it gives extra flexibility and we think that that's one of the best methodologies for this type of disaster. Yeah, indeed. Uh, where I would just add up a few points is like whenever you need something and if people give you something, mm -hmm. like just an example, mm -hmm. if, uh, mm -hmm. if I need uh, a lot of things for my stationery and if you just provide me a pen, 
that is definitely not enough. I need other stationery as well. So cash would be that thing through which I can feel like what's my need and I can spend it according to my need. Yes, I think, I think that's very much the case for us. And obviously, a lot of the beneficiaries have some reserves, mm -hmm. not very much. Yeah. So if we give that, they can pull what they already have okay. to build something better than they would have been without our assistance. Yes, wouldn't right. have been able to without our assistance. So for that reason, that's why we feel that cash works, mm -hmm. especially in an emergency setting like this one. Okay. And how has this blockage that has been happening has affected you personally and also Dan Church Aid? <laughs> Well, like everybody else, we're uh, living with, without uh, heating in the house. Yeah. So, as with everybody else, it's cold. <laughs> um, but in terms of uh, the emergency assistance, mm -hmm. it's obviously created a delay in the field. Okay. Prices have gone up, which means that shipping uh, the materials or getting the materials to uh, the beneficiaries is costing yes. more. Yeah. And there's been a delay mm -hmm. um, when the initial protest in the Terai started yeah. and then followed by the blockade. It meant that it was almost impossible to transport any materials to the field. Mm -hmm. That's loosened up now as we've had more supply routes and different supply routes that are able to go round it and go, and go past it and uh, the supplies come from different, a different place but it did probably delay our response by about two months in terms of what we would have wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Again, especially that's on the provision of uh, infrastructure. So we're building quite a lot of water schemes and we're building, as I said, a lot of household and school toilets. Okay. And just to get the materials to site, it took longer and was more expensive. Mm -hmm. That means, like, however, it's affecting a lot. Uh, how has Dan Church Aid and their uh, response towards, like, the Rai Belt? Were, uh, there were a lot of works going in the Rai? Um, actually, no, not really, because um, the Tarai wasn't so affected by the no. earthquake. Yeah, it wasn't right. one of the 14 affected districts. Mm -hmm. So the impact on us for the Tarai was mainly through the supply of materials. Okay. That's where the major delays were caused, mm -hmm. but we didn't actually have operations there. So those protests didn't actually affect us too much operationally. Okay. Uh, if I ask you to share any of those uh, stories that has been like, do you think um, has affected you personally or has touched your heart and through which, like through Dan Church, you've changed their life through this earthquake. Is there any such story? I, I, I'm sure there must be many. I, I think there was a water scheme that we've built in Gorka, which okay. was for a Dalit community um, who had been uh, left out, A, had been left out of um, other aid distributions and had also um, weren't allowed to use some of the other water sources down, downstream. And we were able to provide them with a high quality water source that they didn't have before. And I remember talking to the, the leader of the community who was saying that she didn't expect to get any assistance at all because of because she was from a Dalit community mm -hmm. and that they were extremely grateful for the assistance that they had and I think that particularly touched me because you could you could see the impact and you knew that you were making a difference. Okay. Uh, and also, I would want to know two major impacts. Like God. I'm, I'm asking a lot of questions to Andrew. I'm really sorry for that. <laughs> well, I'm, uh, we are here for that, but I question you more and you're going to ask, exactly, answer me exactly. more. Exactly, exactly. But one more thing that I would want to ask is like, first, um, three things that you think Dan Church has made difference, like three, just to point out important three things that has changed in terms of earthquake response and two things which could have been better mm -hmm, if, mm -hmm. if better then could you just analyze that way i mean i think the things that where we've really made the difference is in the provision of a uh, cash for temporary shelter yeah, right. allowing people to have shelter over their heads during the monsoon mm. i think the other one is the provision of latrines so rebuilding of damaged toilets for households uh, because a lot of the VDCs in uh, Gorka had been declared open defecation free mm -hmm. and the earthquake really put that progress back quite a lot. So contributing towards those goals and restating the damaged sanitation provision mm -hmm. was I think something that I'm particularly proud of and worked particularly well. 
And then one of the other things about the earthquake is a lot of the water sources is in some places had dried up mm -hmm. and in other places um, they'd uh, sprung in different places. So a lot of the water systems or the water infrastructure mm -hmm. wasn't meeting the needs and didn't match the previous infrastructure. Okay. So through the work we did on water, we were able to provide communities with, with drinking water. And I think that made a huge impact to communities. So I think those were the three things. And what could have been better? I mean, I think that one of the things that could, be, could have been better was um, some of the arrangements around permanent shelter. Okay. Um, I think for us, we would like to intervene and be available to provide some ongoing assist assistance. Mm -hmm. But I think we would, would have liked firmer guidance on what we can and couldn't do from government so that we can, we can provide the most that we can whilst also following our government guidance. Yeah. So I think that's probably the main thing that, we, that I would have liked to have been able to do more. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you have more funding, you can always do more. You can always <laughs> yeah. reach more beneficiaries and you can always, right. you can always do more. So I think mm -hmm. that those are probably the things that I would have done better if I could. Okay, just to take your attention like out of Dan Church for a while, yeah, sure. personally speaking, uh, this is your fourth time in Nepal, right? Third or fourth time, yeah. All right, uh, so how has, like, uh, f just keeping uh, all the destructions, all your works apart, how has been your stay till now? This time? <laughs> uh, this, this time it's been good. I mean, I, I'm, I've, I enjoy being in Nepal, I enjoy Nepali culture, yeah. I enjoy Nepali food. I mean, obviously, going through the winter with the... Uh, with the blockade and the lack of fuel has meant winter has been winter has been difficult yes um so in some ways i wish that things were working a bit more smoothly mm -hmm. but possibly if things were working more smoothly the need to have people like me here wouldn't be as yeah, great right. <laughs> <laughs> if everything was proper i wouldn't see you though <laughs> exactly exactly but, but generally the experience here has been good people have been extremely welcoming um overall it's been a, it's been a good experience and i think we've managed to do a lot Okay, we're also very like, uh, I've been through, I've heard of what Dan Trust has been doing mm -hmm. because you know of how things are and I've been getting that response but working in terms of sanitation and health, um, how difficult has been do you think like in terms of touching the wash project or like working in terms of sanitation and health, mm -hmm. has it been a little tough? It's been a little, it has been a little tough. I mean, as I said, we're, we're working, working more on sanitation and hygiene rather than on the health side. So we don't really have much in the way of uh, health interventions. So it's mainly on the hygiene promotion and the physical infrastructure for um, the sanitation. I mean, I think the thing with it is it's quite technically demanding and the scale of what we're trying to do in a quite a short space of time is also demanding. So it's been... It's been tough, but we've, we've got there, we've got there, but, it's, yeah. but it's, it's not been easy, especially as, for example, for water schemes, mm -hmm. each one has to be individually designed, it has to be unique, you have to get community buy-in, mm -hmm. so there's a lot of work that you have to do around it. So it's technically challenging, it's difficult, but it's definitely worth doing and I think we're going to have a really good result because of it. All right. Yes. Uh, in terms of health and sanitation, it's a must, and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, like positive thing for it is definitely a thumbs up from us as well. Thank We're you, glad that Danchers has been doing so much in terms of like this disaster basis and this earthquake response too. Mm -hmm. And we are glad that you gave time and you came here. Little more, like just few minutes to go because we're about to wrap the show, and it's been like a wonderful talk. Thank mm -hmm. you so much, Andrew, for coming. Thank you very much. Thank and you for if, inviting and me. And at last, if you want to say something more, if I had missed out few points, or uh, if you haven't answered any of those questions, you could just like relate a little bit that is left out. Anything else? Well, I mean, first of all, thank you for inviting me to come on the show and talking a little bit about our work. Uh, as I said, we've, we've done an awful lot of work so far, but there's a lot more to do, mm -hmm. both for the um, response itself and also the long-term recovery work. So we're hoping that we will get additional funding to be able to do that yeah. and that we'll be able to assist Nepal in the rebuilding process, which is going to take several years. All right. Thank you so much again, Andrew. Thank you very much.
So with Andrew Perlman, the interview of uh, Samay Sundar, a uh, different context but yet about development. We would never miss a chance towards development and we wouldn't miss any chance related to the present context. The Bahir Sapi Zanli Himalaya Television, Hey Dinubhai, you listen to us, you've seen us and we're coming out better and more every time. Thank you so much for being with us here at the Gurnas Himalaya Television. Till then, it's me, Prashka, signing off. Thanking you. Namaskar.